Welcome, everybody. My name is Peter Krebs. I'm the uh, Chief Technology Officer and co-founder of Sapphira. Uh, who and what is Sapphira? We are a green building software company. Uh, we started in 2009 and have offices in London and New York, and are focused primarily on the development of both retrofit uh, as well as new building construction software. Our staff is comprised of a variety of really deep thinkers. So we've got mathematicians, building physics experts, and of course, software developers uh, that are included in there. Now, what is the mission that we're on? Our goal is to remove the barriers from actual green construction. And we, can all, we know that there's a variety of different barriers that exist, be it uh, regulatory in nature, um, things on the legal side, financial, of course, and then technological barriers. What we're looking to do is to extend and operate a web platform that looks at the entire ecosystem of building construction. So all the way from the very beginning, which is building design, to the very end, which is retrofit uh, and post-commissioning. Why is this so important? Well, there's actually a variety of key drivers, four drivers to be specific, that are very interesting that cover, uh, cover the, the vast uh, market itself. The first is increasing energy prices, and not just the increase in the prices themselves, but actually the risk associated with those prices increasing. A great example is in the UK. Last year, if you're a homeowner in the UK, you would have seen your electricity and gas bills rise 25% in one year. That's a tremendous amount of money that's coming out of a person's pocket in order to pay for the basic utilities. Similarly, there's a large legislative component. So there are regulatory, regulatory drivers everywhere from China to the EU, even in the United States, a place typically uh, devoid of regulation on the environmental side. To give you a great example, in the UK, by 2016, four years from now, all new homes must be net zero carbon in order to receive their planning permission. That means I can't put a shovel in the ground, I can't start building my house without having considered how the building is going to operate. And it's not just residences and homes, it's also municipal buildings, it's commercial buildings. So this spans and covers the entire market. Similar regulations in place within the EU, uh, also by 2020. And then on the other supportive side, you've got cloud computing. Now every single one of us in this audience uses cloud computing, some of us more than others, but we all use it on a regular and daily basis. If you use Gmail, if you use Facebook, any of those services are delivered by the cloud, and they're powered by the fact that the cost per unit of computation has gone down dramatically and continues to go down, right? That's Moore's law. And if you add that together with a powerful catalyst, the catalyst that building green buildings is difficult, that is really where we see these elements all come together. Now, why is, green building, why is building green buildings a difficult task? Well, 10 years ago, I was the green building engineer behind the Solaire, which was America's first lead gold building. It's based in New York City, and it's an apartment building of 30, uh, 30 stories in height. Now, the Solaire took a very typical path through the construction cycle. It started with a design process with a variety of different charrettes where you tried to figure out what are the right systems, what are the right building morphologies and designs that can help us get to a green state. The, the trouble is that the vast majority of buildings although they should be designed with sustainability at the first step, at concept stage, as we call it, in reality, the, the, the actual design happens at the very end. And so the regulations and the other uh, compliance that gets built into the building happens as a result of validation design. So will this building become BREEAM excellent, or LEED Gold, or DNGB certified? These are the kind of things that happen, but at the very end of a building's infrastructure. Far too late from where you actually could have made a substantive change. In fact, if you look at the cycle of how green buildings uh, are designed, if we invest just a little bit more time and effort at that first percent of design, we can reduce the building's energy consumption by 80 or 90 percent, a tremendous amount. Remember, that's getting compounded over the entire OPEX stream of, of paying for those utilities, and the building lasts for, what, 40, 50, 60 years? That's not unusual. So three years ago, we set out uh, a task to build a platform to support this, and what we've come up with is a variety of different applications that sit on what we call the fulcrum analysis engine. There's applications for architects and engineers at the conceptual stage. There's applications for, called Renew for the retrofit uh, and renovation stage. Those are geared more towards ESCOs and energy assessors and auditors. And then there's platforms product manufacturers and folks like utility companies who use and leverage our platform to figure out where are the best uh, areas to invest in? What segment of their building should they invest in to reduce energy consumption? There's a variety of different applications that sit and operate on top of that API. 
They include everything from future climate analysis, looking at how this building will perform not just today, but 20, 30, 50 years from now, uh, as well as energy scenario planning. Where is the risk inherent in how the building is going to uh, be funded, not just today, but moving into the future? As I said, this is powered by Fulcrum, which is a revolutionary new way of approaching building physics analysis. Now, for those of you who are not engineers in the room, which I know is probably most of you, you don't have the pleasure of knowing what current systems look like. If you do an analysis of an existing building today, it might take you three, four hours. We've heard of engineers for whom it takes 24 or 48 hours to do one analysis. The thing is, we know that to do a lot of green building design, you need to do a lot of analysis. And so you have to reduce the amount of time it takes to do that work. So we've built a brand new bottom-up way of approaching these problems. And that's using the Fulcrum Analysis Engine. It does away with the parts of, uh, of design that are non-iterative, rather iterative, and makes them uh, a non-iterative context. We actually take over 400 different servers and use that to compute every one of our calculations. So instead of spending three to four hours, or in some cases, days worth of a, an analysis, our analysis happens in 10 seconds, guaranteed, flat. Now, when you do something in 10 seconds, all of a sudden, it unlocks a whole dynamic uh, area of different opportunities. Now you can try things like response curves and parametric analysis, letting the building talk back to you and say, OK, my ideal orientation is 47 degrees from south, or my ideal glazing ratio is x, y, z. Where should I invest in terms of renewables? Where should I invest in terms of different kind of systems, uh, HVAC systems and the like, that I want to put in my building? The folks behind me are just some of the sampling of customers that we have, folks like Deloitte and Len Lease working on a portfolio side, looking at where they should invest their money to retrofit their buildings. Folks like Design Leaders Z Factory or RSP Architects that give a whole range across both very small and large firms that are visionary and have seen what the power of cloud computing and energy analysis, sustainability analysis in general, can provide for them. Of course, this isn't done without having a fantastic team, and I'm lucky to have our CFO, Sarah Williamson, with us today. We've got a bunch of backing uh, from uh, background, rather, in the startup space. We've done five different startups between the management team um, together. We've got deep expertise on the sales side into the AEC, or architectural engineering and, uh, and construction market. And we've got deep transactional and software expertise uh, as well. Where are we going, and how do we differentiate ourselves from the rest of the pack? The real differentiator is the engine itself. Fulcrum is the world's fastest cloud engine for green building analysis. It's looking at water, energy, carbon, and the actual costs associated with that. We build a platform architecture that's very easily extensible and meets the requirements of a variety of different players, not just architects and engineers, but also product manufacturers and utility companies. And we merge the elements of both building and physics together to form very, very useful results for our customers. Thank you very much.